Welcome to Trick of the Week. This time we're going to be looking at a little pattern that's really easy under your fingers and it gives us two things. It gives us a minus seventh to minus sixth vamp and it also gives us two of the three chords in a really common jazz chord progression. So first of all, let's find out what it looks like on the fingerboard. I'm doing it at the third fret, but this pattern, as you'll find out, works all over the neck. I'm holding down. Now, if you're familiar with a, a diminished seven chord shape, this is the same finger shape, but stretched out. So at the third fret, I'm playing the fourth string and I'm playing the second string with my first two fingers. Nothing happens at the fourth fret, but at the fifth fret, my little finger is going to play the first string and my ring finger is going to play the third string. So if you've ever played that diminished seven chord shape, that little zigzaggy one, we're just stretching it out. Third and fifth frets. Now what you've got there is a G minor seven. If you want to make a G minor seven into a G minor six, all you do is lower your ring finger from the fifth to the fourth and you get this sound. Now that sound is one that you'll hear in lots of kinds of music. You hear it in pop songs, you'll hear it in jazz tunes, you'll hear it in Latin music. It's a great way of sitting on one chord, which is what a vamp is really. It's, I'm going to sit on this one chord, but I want to do something that makes it sound interesting without leading the song off somewhere else. So if I was playing a song and I had that chord as my intro chord and I don't know when the singer's going to come in, I might just go and I can keep doing that until the singer wants to start the song. Now as I said it'll work anywhere on the neck, there are no open strings, so at the first and third frets it's F minor 7 to F minor 6. At the 5th to 7th frets here, A minor 7, A minor 6. And so on. Well that's a cool sound in itself and, and if you're writing a song and you find yourself playing a minor 7th chord, maybe a G minor 7 down there, instead of playing it there you could find this inversion and then you know you've got that handy little one finger move. But there's more to this trick than that. Because that minor sixth chord can also be thought of as a different chord. If I go from my G minor seven to my G minor six, three of these notes, if I take my little finger off, are part of this bar chord. Three, four, three. Those three notes there are the same on both of them. If I bar the third fret and play that chord shape, it just looks like an A7 moved up, it's a C7. And if I add this note, it's a C9. A nine chord is just doing the job of a seventh chord in a more fancy way. So I'm not only going from G minor seven to G minor 6, I could also be seen to be going from G minor 7 to C9. Now without getting too complicated, if I was playing something in the key of F, my 2 chord, F, G, just counting from F, which is often minor, could be this, G minor 7. If I move that one finger down, now I have a C9, which is just doing the job of a C7, that is my F, G, A, B, C, my five chord, and my one chord would be the F from the key of F, and I could do this, G minor seven, C nine, and then I could play an F down there, or maybe I could play an F six just by barring straight across the fifth fret. That pattern is probably the most common pattern in jazz. There are songs that are made up of nothing but that all over the place, changing key, moving around. Songs like Satin Doll, which goes, then moves up two frets. 
and then moves back down again. There are songs that do this all the time. They take a little pattern and move it around. And that pattern is nearly always the two chord, the five chord, and the one chord. The two chord is minor, so we can play that as a minor seven and sound jazzy. The five chord is going to be a seventh chord, but if we're doing jazzy stuff, we might want to extend that to make it a more colourful ninth. And then it leads home to our one chord. We don't even have to think about where the five chord is. If we've got that one, that chord is going to be a big contender to the one that follows it in a lot, a lot of jazz tunes. So just being able to do that, is really going to help you find your way through jazz tunes. So it's two things. It's a nice little vamp and it's two chords out of one of the most common jazz progressions there is and you can change them with one finger. I hope you've enjoyed this one and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.